Okay, FAQ number 86. Which Greek text do I recommend? I'll get that question periodically as well. And uh, people say, you know, well, I do believe the King James Bible, but, uh, you know, I like to study the Greek every once in a while. Um, my question for you is, why? Why do you have to study a language that is dead? You say, well, over in Greece they speak, no, they speak a modern version. The Greek that the Bible is written in is not spoken in modern day Greece. So why do you have to study a dead language? Well, with greater insights and things like this. Really? Um, so you can do a better job translating or get more meaning from the Greek, you know? And see, the danger of this whole thing is uh, a lot of people are not aware of the fact that there are many, many, many different Greek texts, which I'm going to be talking about here in a minute. But you have many Greek texts, and then you also have many different people, how, and, and they define Greek words differently. And you get some of these people, uh, you know, the, and the, they're like Unitarians and things, you know, Thayer, the Thayer's Greek lexicon. And God was a Unitarian. What are you even saved? Not even a saved man, and he's going to tell you what Greek words mean, you know, in, in how it relates to the King James Bible. Yeah, like you can really trust him. A lot of these people that work on the, the Greek, you know, text committees and things, they're not even saved. So, you know, I mean, you know, you have the Nestle's text as a Jesuit cardinal, Carlo Maria Martini, worked on the thing. A Jesuit cardinal, you know, and this is something that you really need to study, you know. Sure, right. <coughs> it just, it, it all harkens back to this whole philosophy of, yea, hath God said. Um, you know, the King James Bible is a translation that has been proven like no other translation ever in history. Uh, it has been proven to be greatly used by God. And years and years and years ago, I studied this Bible version debate thing in depth. Um, I have a lot of the books that are written on the subject. I do have some that are written against the King James Bible, but I saw very early on. Uh, I mean, you're never going to convince me that the new versions are okay, because I used new versions for 25 years. Okay, so don't don't tell me about the new versions are better and whatever else. They're not. Um, and so the people that were defending these new versions, I saw right away their arguments are very, very weak. And so I did read some of these new version, you know, people's books. But, you know, I'm, the majority of my time was spent reading books that actually defend the Word of God, the King James Bible. I don't really waste much time with people that attack it because they offer no perfect standard. They offer no perfect replacement. They'll talk about the Greek or the Hebrew, and they don't even believe in that. So... Just kind of weird, but I, I realized early on, uh, years and years ago, before I even made my first videos for YouTube, I realized I need to have a standard, and I need to be able to preach the standard to people, and I need to be able to give them that same standard so that they don't rely on me, so that they can have something in their hands that they can say, hey, I can judge anything, including Brian Denlinger, I can judge anything because I have a standard. Okay, and there's a lot of, well, it could be said this way or it could be translated that way over here with these Greek texts. All right, that's why I don't recommend Greek texts. Don't waste your time on it, brethren. I mean, good night. What are you going to do a better job than, than the 47 men who translated your King James Bible? You're going to find something that they didn't find and, and oh, now you've found some new truth? Hey, if a thing is so, you can find it in your King James Bible. You don't need to find deeper meanings and hidden things and stuff like that. Finding hidden things uh, is what a call is still. Just read your King James Bible. Let me tell you, God will show you things in the English that you won't find over here. Okay? And again, you know, you have to study all these ancient languages and everything else. I mean, it take you years to be able to even under, truly understand this whole issue over here. Why not just spend your time reading the English Bible that God has blessed and used for over 400 years now? Just read and believe it. Oh no, i got to find deeper meaning over here. No, you don't. Let me just show you some of the problems with this side over here. First I have, this is a Trinitarian Bible Society, uh, Hebrew and Greek. You know, here's the Hebrew on the back there and there's the Greek on the front there. And you can open it up, you know, and, and everything. You got to go backwards for the Hebrew, and then you got to go forward with the Greek. You know, I have it just to show it on camera. I've never read any of this thing. To me, it's a waste of time. 
Here we have just the standard of New Testament Greek Textus Receptus. Uh, again, you know, there were multiple editions of this thing. Uh, you know, I've talked about that. People say the Greek. The Greek doesn't work on either side of the issue, whether you go with the Alexandrian, the Nestles type, or if you go with the Texas Receptus. There are multiple editions. So which one is the perfect one? See, you know, people say, oh, it's heresy to believe in per the King James Bible perfection, but it's okay to believe in Greek perfection. Okay, well, you're still running into the same problem. Which one is perfect? Doesn't work. Over here we have, this is a 25th edition of the Nestle's text. This is actually put out by the Jehovah's Witnesses, prepared by two Jesuit scholars. I've showed this thing on camera many times. You can look up the other videos. Here we have the 27th, yeah, 27th edition of the Nestle's text. Here you have the 28th edition. Now let me just, you know, find this one page here really quickly. I'll just show you what I'm talking about, why you can't rely on this whole thing. Um, it should naturally be understood this is page 45 of the introduction again I've showed this in other studies you can look this up um, it should naturally be understood that this text is a working text in the sense of a century long Nestle tradition it is not to be considered as definitive but as a stimulus to further efforts toward defining and verifying the text of the New Testament for many reasons however the present edition has not been deemed an appropriate occasion for introducing textual changes. So they're telling you right in the forward of the thing, this is not definitive. You can't say this is the Greek, the inspired word of God, the, the purest copy of the original autographs. It can't be considered as definitive. And here's the 28th edition. Now to replace the 27th. Oh, and, but I'm sure that they're going to have the 28th is the final one, right? Of course not. They'll come out with another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. That's why I don't mess with this stuff over here. This King James Bible is done. It's finished. I can preach this thing in 100 years from now. Somebody can watch my videos, and of course we aren't going to be around in 100 years, but you know we'll be in the Millennial Kingdom by then. But my point is, you know, somebody could come along 100 years from now, and you can, they could watch my sermons and read the same Bible and say, oh yeah, come to the same conclusions. See, uh, I, can, I can read books and things from men back in the 1800s, preachers back in the 1800s, listen to their sermons. Well, can't really listen to the audio because it wasn't really around much uh, back then. Maybe some of them 100 years ago. But, you know, my point is you can read old books and things. I mean, I have a book up there. I'm not going to reach up and get it, but it's an original copy of The Life of D.L. Moody, written by his son, published in uh, 1899. And I can read through that thing and I can see all the scripture references. They're the same ones I have today in my King James Bible. See? That's why the King James Bible is all you need. And again, you know, this, this whole pride issue, you know, oh, but what does the Greek say? I could care less what the Greek says. Okay? I mean, and again, see, you'd have to be forced into a double standard as a Christian. I mean, I'm going to go out and witness on the street with, with this, you know, I mean, how many people do you think I could talk to about the Lord and say, let me show you this verse of Scripture. Let me turn to it here. Let's go to John chapter 3, verse 16. Okay, here it is. There you go. Isn't that wonderful? They'd look at the thing and they'd be going, you know, <laughs> it's great to me, you know. See, this is no good to you today as a Christian. This is a waste of time. This book is good to you. This book will change lives. It'll change your life. I'm sure many of you out there right now are nodding saying, yeah, it did change my life. I praise God for that King James Bible. So, which Greek text do I recommend? None of them. I recommend the King James Bible. 